Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video, and I'm sorry for all the background noise fans and stuff because it's 100 degrees here in Texas. But wanted to mention this. I know a few people, including a guy named Corey, wanted me to, to talk about Tree Williams, who sadly recently passed away. Now, for those who don't know, Tree Williams to me was a very underrated actor was a guy that should have gotten a lot more than he did. Now he did have a career that spanned many decades from doing films like Prince of the City with the director Sidney Lumet to being in films like The Substitute Sequels, Dead Heat with Joe Piscopo and my personal favorite Deep Rising which is a 1998 film starring Tree Williams which originally was meant for Harrison Ford but he said no he did doesn't want to tell you he did Air Force One and Six Days Seven Nights because Air Force One is 97 Six Days Seven Nights was 98 and this came out about January February of 1998 <clears throat> Entertaining B movie creature feature with a nice size budget, likable fun characters, uh, R rated, so you got some decent gore in there. You got Fonte Johnson, you got Kevin J. O'Connor, Wes Studi, and Tree Williams did a wonderful job. He's very likable, he was a badass, he had a good wink in his eye. <clears throat> you know, it's funny, recently, for another request, I've been playing some of these games uh, at the character Nathan Drake. And I would say if you had, if it was the late 80s, early 90s, uh, this guy could have played Nathan Drake. Because you look at this guy here, like right there, that guy kind of looks like, you know, let's see if I do it side by side, that could work fairly well. And nowadays, could have been Nathan Fillion, but of course they choose Tom Holland because... Bullshit reason, but anyway. But that said. But yeah, he was also the villain in The Phantom with Billy Zane. Like, he's a guy that whenever he popped up, he would always do a really good job. He was Jane Franco's dad in 127 Hours. Uh, the, substitute, the substitute sequels are fun, direct -to video action movies. You know, the first one was in theaters with Tom Berenger, but then Tree Williams did the three sequels. And you could argue that the sequels, especially three, were better than the first movie. I like all four substitute movies, but while I do like Tom Berenger, Tree Williams seemed like he had a bit more fun and was comfortable in the role. Uh, did he did it be a bit hard to watch that because by the end he's playing a zombie and him and... I will spoil it for those who haven't seen it. It's still an interesting 80s horror comedy. Like I said, this is always my favorite. I love this character. He's a very likable character. Has certain catchphrases like, what now what? And it's just sad that this guy, he was 71 years old. And the re how he died was some idiot, some moron, some dumbass uh, didn't see him. Tree Williams was on a motorcycle. Mind his own business, following the letter of the law like we all should when you're on the road. As some idiot didn't see him, at least that's his story, cut him off, as thus Treat couldn't do anything and died. Now, I, I know it was an accident, but I'm sorry if you're that fucking stupid that you can't see someone on a goddamn motorcycle on the road. Uh, you should never drive again. And in my opinion, you should be in jail for your stupidity. I'm tired of stupid people being out in the world and walking around. I, I wish stupid people put them in jail. That, that's, that should be a new law. If you're fucking stupid, you're too stupid to have money, you're too stupid to drive, you're too stupid to have a job, you should be in jail. How about that? That'd be a new law. I think it would save a lot of headaches and a lot of stuff, so... I hope that motherfucker gets jail time. I hope so. And uh, whoever hit Tree Williams accidentally, yes, I know, but you know, you could go to hell. 
I don't care. I'll be fucking blunt and honest about this. Tree Williams, number one, good actor, underrated actor. Number two, I'm a fan of his. Number three, seem like a nice guy. You've only heard nice, kind things. So, of course, it's the miserable, shitty people still around. But the nice, good people, they're the ones that get taken. So, go fucking figure. That's life itself, huh? I know I'm going on a rant, but it's bullshit. You know, that's just how I do it. But yeah, the... <laughs> anyway, just a few words about the guy. I don't know how far in to go into this. Like I said, anytime I saw him, seemed like a good dude. Seemed like a nice guy. And like I said, just a very underrated actor. He had a lot of charm, had a twinkle in his eye. And I wish he could have done more roles like this. But sadly, this film bombed, only made $11 million total. It did not deserve that. It deserved to be a hit. We'll love to have seen a sequel. We'll love to have seen more of even just this kind of movies. And just treat in general in leading man roles. But sadly, that was very, very few and far in between, other than, again, drama, Prince of the City. Which, I mean, good acting, but it's very long. I would say way too long. Because it's like two and a half hours, maybe three hours. Like, it's a very long movie. I don't think it need to be that long. I say the substitute sequels are fun. If you like lower budgeted action movies. And it's a dead heat. If you like 80s horror comedies with a bit of special effects, baked up effects, utilized into it. But... Uh, I recently did a commentary for this for a live stream with one of my dear friends, Efri. It's a great time hanging out with them, and a treat will be missed. So it's a big fucking bummer. And the, the guy who hit him, uh, I hope he gets jail time and he can suck my dick and he can go to hell and all that shit. So I don't give a fuck. I'm being blunt and honest. If people don't like it, tough. That's just how I feel. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.